Hello and thanks for tuning in today. We'll be looking at how to do a man in the middle attack. Uh, I received a lot of questions about doing this uh, video because the presentation that I did, some people wanted to see it in video, so let's look at that. First we see that uh, Donkey is communicating with Granny normally, but Bad Penguin wants to intercept the traffic so he's need to do a man in the middle attack. He's going to do this by ARP spoofing Granny first. So he's going to ARP poison Granny by saying that he's Donkey. And what this does is it basically makes all of the traffic Granny tries to send to Donkey go to the Penguin first. Now that only completes half of it. Next, the Penguin, the Bad Penguin, needs to now ARP spoof Donkey on the other side to get his traffic coming to him as well. So as a result of that, anything that Granny tries to send to Donkey comes to the Penguin. Anything that Donkey tries to send to Granny comes to the Penguin. And once he's got that done, he's completed the Man in the Middle attack. Now that's enough for the overview. Let's go ahead and look at it from a uh, how to do it perspective. Alright, starting off here, we've got our uh, one of our 2003 servers here. And it's actually hosting uh, an FTP server. And this, is, this will be the machine that we're actually going to log into. So let's grab his IP. He's 109. Alright, so now let's go ahead and I'll show you there's an FTP server here sitting on 109. Let's get this so we can see it. Now on this FTP server, there's a user created called Hacker and he's got a relatively strong password. So that's the account we'll use to log into this FTP server. Next, here's the machine that's going to be the client. He's going to be the one actually doing the login. And we can see he's got an IP address of 110. Now if we look at our Linux attack server here, this is our third piece in this, we do an IF config here, we can see that he's got an IP address that's different, he's not 110, he's not 109. So uh, we can see his IP right here, and that's his, uh, his IP, so his IP is even different. So we got three different pieces going here. Now what we'll start doing here, let's go and do a continuous ping from, one on, from 110 to 109. And what we'll do is once we get this ping going, we'll let it just keep going. And once we're playing with our ARP spook, we can come back and look at our pings to see if they're successful or not to tell whether or not we've actually broken the communication. Because breaking the communication is half of the ARP spoof. Alright, so first we will ARP spoof in the direction of 109. So we will tell 110 that we're 109. actually we'll tell it 109 that we're 110 now we will tell 110 that we're 109 and it really doesn't matter which one you do first as long as you tell both sides this, the lie you know you want the one guy to think you're the other guy and the other guy to think you're the other guy so you want both of them to think you're the other guy so we're ARP spoofing both sides here and that's part of the process now they both think we're the other so what should be happening is both pieces of traffic is coming to us which is a result now we can see the pings are unsuccessful because the, the echoes are not getting there nor the echo replies because they're coming to us first and we're not passing this information on to the to the real target or the intended destination which is why we see them broken so let's go back and we're gonna turn on IP forwarding because this is gonna allow us to be able to forward these packets on to the original in, uh, destination which essentially completes the man in the middle because now not only is the traffic coming to us but we're able to successfully forward it to who it was originally intended to go to. So let's uh, go ahead and do this and we'll do this by simply uh, writing a 1 into the config file that controls whether or not IP forwarding is able or not. Uh, if we put a 1 that turns it on, a uh, 0 turns it back off. So we want it on 1. Now let's check our pings and we can see that they are indeed successful again. And what that means is we've completed the man in the middle, but, you know, there's still a couple of things we need to do because, you know, essentially we want to be able to get credentials out of uh, performing this attack. So if, to do that, we're going to use uh, something called dsniff. So let's go back to our Linux. 
and we'll just start dsniff by typing dsniff get our screen so we can see it alright so dsniff is running now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna from this first machine I'm gonna FTP to the FTP server sitting on 109 and we're gonna use that hacker credential and what should happen is we should be able to see those credentials pop up uh, inside dsniff just from logging on here because remember we've got both machines traffic coming through us first before it's going to its uh, destination so I'll use hacker as a username and I'll use that super strong password that we had before that we set up in there so we can see we get credentialed in we can see the files and folders and things we can browse them uh, we can do whatever we want now let's look at our Linux notice we don't actually have the credentials yet we have just got the, the default anonymous attempt that blasts out in the beginning here but we actually need real credentials the reason we don't see them is because dsniff needs to see the session from the beginning to the end which includes the ending of it so let's go ahead and close the session now we go back to dsniff we should see that we can see credentials there now and that's exactly how you do a man in the middle attack so take some time work through this see if you can get it to work on your end and thanks again for watching check you later <laughs>